Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's the first month of May 2019 and we had a pretty exciting today today, today and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas who's in charge to give us the watch list. Okay, well, you know what guys, what a day. I got to tell you, the morning was great. What a weird afternoon. Okay, so we're going to talk about Zynga, RBZ, Sun W, Grub, Spy, and a bonus play. So let's first talk about Zynga. So, you know, Zynga is one of those uh, gaming stock companies. I've talked about what the company does before. They have a lot of apps, uh, gaming apps. And you know what? They had their earnings today after hours, and we actually bought this from the options angle. We bought the $6 calls and uh, got those, I think, 35 cents. So Zynga was up after hours in reaction to the earnings. Uh, they did mark its best ever quarter for the mobile revenue and bookings. The revenue did grow 27%, which is great. Bookings were up 64% and mobile revenue 35%. So that's great. Um, this is the first quarter where they have stopped reporting its web audience, which apparently dwindled to a small fraction of the total versus mobile. So... Uh, for the second quarter, they are guiding the revenue to $280 million with net increase in deferred of 80 So we'll see what happens. They do have a conference call that's currently happening right now. Uh, but you know what? The market did like what's going on with Zynga, and so do I. So like the aftermarket hours. And Jim, what do you see on that chart? Well, we've been talking about Zynga for a long time, along with the glue and a couple of other ones. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart, just show you how beautiful this little call's been. One of our local people in the room also has kind of mentioned it to us, and we appreciate him. And I'm going to name him out, Mr. Wall Street. And this is the first year here. We go down here to about a $3.32 low with a support level right at 337 That's where I call that bottom at. And we've had a pretty nice little drive all the way up here since last, oh, I guess it started last December, the end of, end of uh, November. And she's bounced all the way up in a pretty good little channel just straight up with a couple little slides back down for buy entries. And today we broke into a year high. Now if I pull up the three-year chart, we're not going to see much, I don't think. We're going to see that three-year high here at 578, which we got after hours today. And that low support right down here, right around the 451 area. So we're going to pull up the 20-day right now, have a look at it. We're going to try to find us a low support. Now we had to break this 555 level, 553, and we did that. We did break it a couple of times. We had a high up here to right about 570. And then we pulled back on that and run into that 200 on the 20-day, one-hour chart. And then pre-market, we had another big bounce. I guess this would have been a good indicator to think. And then it sold off all day today. It sold off all day today. It went down to about 4. Well, I had a support line here at 547. And we did have a low right around after hours right here around 530. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. And we do like this stock. We like it a lot. We watch it every day. Actually, I've made a couple good option plays on it myself with Miss Vegas's help. But after hours we pulled back to 5.30 and when had that first dip and then all of a sudden she just ran up into a, a beautiful little ascending I guess you could almost call this an ascending pattern here at 6.17 that's what we're going to call the high that we have to break. What I mean by ascending you can see the higher lows with the flat top neckline of 6.17 which is really top of the forehead and so that's what we've got to break. I'm going to call a support level on this thing and pull back right around $6 tomorrow. I do believe it will pull back on this a little bit. And then we can start uh, moving back up on this trade. So I'm going to put another one right here right around the 590 area. And then we have all these other supports, which was a previous high we had here today at 578. So we're going to put a little trend line right there. And we're going to need to keep this balance between 578 and 580. I like to see that hold. If not, we're going to go back to this 552, 555 area. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing some pretty good action on this definitely after hours. So this is going to be one you want to be keep on watch. And we've been bullish on this for about oh, good 
five months and that's Zynga. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be RBZ. We called this, I called this out pretty young and I'm going to let Miss Vegas talk about it. RBZ. Yeah, so you know what, RBZ, we have alerted this one again because, you know, this did have a bit of a, a pullback. You know, this has, like, I mean, we don't, we don't like, you guys can see where, where they are. I mean, they're out in Singapore, and uh, you guys should check out this company. I mean, I really am impressed with the website. Um, they have all kinds of stuff, you know, designer stuff, amazing, amazing deals. Uh, but you know what, this has pulled back at one point, and this is really, in my opinion, good to go. Uh, from a reversal perspective, I also think shorts will be in trouble here. And so we do have RBZ uh, alerted here. And um, I know that some people may already have RBZ. And uh, we did share this one today at around the 729 mark. Now, people have been in and out of this stock, but people are back in this trade because they want to see some sort of reversal coming and also um, potential news. I mean, we don't have news at the moment, but we've seen um, sometimes where the stock's pulled back like this and the next thing you know, there's some sort of news. So right now there is no news. So we'll wait and see what happens. But right now RBZ is an, a current swing. And uh, Jim, let's hear about that chart because it's kind of been holding up over that $7 mark. Oh yeah, and RBZ, that's the wrong chart. I need to pull up this one here. We're going to pull up the 20 day. I called this thing out when it was kind of down here at the bottom. About I'll show you where I'm talking about. When it was not at 380, but down here after the big run, it had a huge run. This is a very low float stock of about 3.6 million. So it fits that profile. And this thing was called out here at 380 and bounced all the way up to $27. This thing went crazy. And then it pulled back within that next morning and hit that bottom again right here around 421. Well, I called this out last week right right here around five dollars. I think it was the low five dollar area, right down in here at 555. And the thing bounced on up, and then she kind of picked up momentum pre-market this morning. So let's go ahead and bring this back to state here. And I'm going to pull this up to. A five day one minute we had a little support right here right around the 664 and then Miss Vegas heard it on the scanner she started popping up we had a resistance high here right around the 749 area and she dipped on down before the market closed so that's going to be a support at 690 and we've got different supports on this stock so I'm going to bring this up to a five day five minute we got a low support that we want to see it hold here at 664. You see it tried to touch down there a couple of times, and it's got a little channel it's working on right now. So if this thing does pull back and it hits that 664, I would consider that a pretty solid support and run it back up to the 648 area. And if she wants to break, she can go back to the previous highs that we called out here last week, right around the, the double top area, right here, right around 838. So I've got different resistances on this chart. You're willing to stop it at any time and copy and paste it. And use it for your own personal use. And I say personal. Um, this is 664 low. We don't want to see it go any lower than that. If it does, it's going to be a good buy. No lower than 612. And the resistance levels that we need to break is going to be 748, 803, and 838 to bring it up to that five-day high of 875. And that's RBZ. Please keep this on your watch list, your top 20, because it definitely keeps the volume and has the momentum to bounce and pull back. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be SUNW. Bring on the sun, Vegas. Yeah, so I was talking about this one here. So, you know, the sun, you know, this is called Sun Works. They're into solar power systems, and uh, they are everywhere but uh you know they're located in california of all places um but you know what i really like this company and the reason i like in this company not in love with the company obviously but you know i'm liking the chart um and the reason i like it first of all i love the highs of the stock and i just love the channel that it's in and all the buying that i'm seeing going on in the stock so when i did chart this earlier today because i said you know what this looks like it's ready for some an expansion breakout 
And uh, the stock's, you know, slow grinders. So it's not going to happen like lickety split, but it is definitely 52 week high and uh, very pleased with where it's going and how it closed. So I'm actually looking for this to go to about $1.82. And I'm going to let Jim talk about this chart because this is a very pretty chart. And Jim, let's hear where it's going because it looks pretty good to me right now. Well, there's a lot of history of California, and it, this company is perfect to be based in California, especially with how much of a green state they want to become. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm bullish on solar stocks right now this time of the year for sure. So let's bring it up. We're going to bring up the year chart, just have a look at it and see what Miss Vegas is talking about. We do have it on the year's chart. We have a year high, which we are at right now. We did break it to 142, and I'm going to pull up a three. And we did have a low down here at 25 cents. I mean, this is crazy. And this thing dipped down back in December when my crystal ball came out. This would have been a very nice investment right here. You'd have had you a good 500% run on this trade. So let's go ahead and pull up a three years. See if we can get some new highs on this trade. Oh yeah, I can see here, you see we had a three year high up here right around 360, 336. And I can see a gap that needs to be filled here at 170. We have a 176, 200 SMA on a three year chart. And we have another one right here. Oh, that's a beautiful place right there at 191. So yeah, I can see that we did have a low, a year low down here right back in December and she's done nothing but had a beautiful week here five days in a row straight green, green candles every base is above every base and then we had the big breakout candle here and these are the kind of candles I do love so we do have a pullback support right here at 129 I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into a red line so I can remember that come tomorrow we called this out today I called it to go to 150 we did hit 142 and you can see if it starts getting into this new channel, it did fill the gap right here on the three black crows that we have right here. See them black crows and it did pull back. So I'm going to bring that back to... Yeah, so we need to break that and we did break that. We closed right there at 138, 139. That's where it needs to move up to the next leg. I see a resistance level at 150 and then at 162 with another gap that needs to be filled and we'll put another trend line right here at 176 and we want to try to bring her up to about 191 and if we can do that we got a new high up here and I do believe this thing can keep running to 205 especially with this pattern right here if it pulls back it might be a strong dead cat bounce or a good buy so let me pull up the 20 day real fast and we'll get this done with <clears throat> I got a 110 low support with a very low, low, strong buy at 99 cents, anything below that is going to be a real strong buy, no lower than 90. The breakout, we got to break past 147 to take it to 150. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get, let me change the day on this so I can get the other resistances back up on this year here. 152, so I got to go back to the three. And then I can call out these other resistances real fast. Okay, this is what. Go ahead and stop and pause this chart for the resistance lines that I drew up on that three year chart. That does look like a lot of blue there, but every one of them means something. So we've got to get up to that 152, 156, and break that 162 and bring it up to the other resistances. I have a long target on this trade at $2.05. If this keeps up this momentum, we are going to see that because that is, look at them candles. That's nothing but breakout mode right there. Beautiful week chart. Beautiful one week chart right there. So that's SUNW. I'm bullish on solar right now. And the next one we're going to talk about is food. And that's something I really love. Miss Vegas, you around? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, You're okay. still talking. Oh, no, I'm done. Talk. Uh, okay. Let's okay. talk about some grub. I'm hungry. <laughs> I want, yeah, listen. Oh, my God. So I just got to tell you. So this CEO <laughs> obviously has must make a big paycheck because he actually uh, bought 
a million dollars worth of grub stock, Mr. Matthew Maloney. Okay. So, um, my goodness, he bought, I mean, and, and again, this sounds like a small amount of shares, you know, with these penny stock players, you hear, oh, I have 10,000 shares. I have 50,000 shares. Well, you know what? He bought 15,416 shares of grub. He paid $64 and 87 cents. He bought them yesterday. And you know what? His cost to the purchase was a million dollars. And those of you that are not familiar with Grub, you know, they're an online mobile platform. They kind of like almost, I guess, like an Uber Eats. Okay. So they provide restaurants with orders to help serve dinner and they facilitate delivery, logistics, and many markets. So again, this is a competitor of Uber Eats. So watch out when Uber goes IPO. Okay. Uh, but you know what? I did call this trade yesterday. Mm. I said, this is going to be a short squeeze is imminent. And my God, I really wasn't expecting almost $10 a share, but what a sweet squeeze that was. And so, wow, Mr. Matthew, I had no idea that you bought a million dollars worth of your company stock. One thing I do want to say, and Jim's going to talk about the chart. I just want to say, whenever you see a CEO or a C-level executive of the company actually buying their own company stock. I love it. It's a good sign. Um, it just shows confidence in the company. I mean, he's putting skin in the game. So he's obviously investing money himself in his own company stock. So that shows me that he is invested himself. And that's a, I like what I'm seeing. So, I mean, he just bought it yesterday. I mean, he's already made money on his, sh on his shares, uh, which is a great, timing of his buy um but obviously there's probably good um you know we'll have to see good um you know good growth in the in the company so we'll see where this goes in the next little while but wow uh nice nice move today so congrats to any grub holders out there and uh good job mr matthew shaping yeah. up the company yeah this all is... right jim let's hear about grub hub well i'm gonna i'm gonna say something about mr grub hub here yeah uh they have an active dinner network of over 17.7 million users. They have an orders from over 105,000 takeout restaurants with over 2,000 cities. And, I mean, this guy is really onto something big here, especially with, with, with just magnificent. So let's look at the chart. This is Grub. I'm going to got the weekly. Well, I've got a three-year right here. Let's pull up. Pull up the one year. We got a one year high up here, right around 149.35. And when I talked to Miss Vegas, I heard this on the scanner. I said, Miss Vegas, this thing's cheap. We had a year bottom yesterday at 63.13, and she picked up on this. And then today, I said we were going to hit after we had this on our report uh, yesterday, and I said this thing's going to hit 171 dollars. And we closed here at 71.41 with a high. And let me look at the day high here. First, I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart that tells you how attractive this trade was. We did have a high here right back here oh, about last week up here at 77.80. And then she had that drastic drop for three days in a row down to 63. So that there was a good, good little $14 dip in three days. And today we hit that resistance that I called out at 71. And we're going to hit this new high up here, right around 72.91. And then I got another one where I'm going to do draw a trend line right around 20, 72. Um, what it was at 72.27. So our next targets, we're going to probably pull back a little bit on this trade. But he got in at a pretty good price. He got in at the bottom, and so did Miss Vegas. You can see we had a double bottom here about two weeks ago, down here at that 63.80 area. And you see where the base of that candle kind of hood up, stood up with that wick down below it. Well, the wick is always the weak part of the trade for me. I like to get in at the base, as they would call it. That's the case. And we're going to run her up right here to about 67.64 with another little trend line here at 70.21. So this is how I see it. We've got some resistances we got to get to. And then we got another final resistance right here with a double top right around 76.98 so if this thing pulls back 
we can pull back to the pivot point area in this new channel we have right here between 6388 and 7291 actually I'm going to adjust that 7291 to 7255 and there's a reason I must have put that line on there so I'm going to leave it there so the pivot point area in this channel is going to be this gap right in here that's what we're going to call low support right around 6851 to 6921 in that area and I'm going to darken that up real fast so I can remember that come Monday for a strong buy or tomorrow I'm going to put that right there and bam there it is so that's going to be our support area I don't want it to go below any of that if it does we have another support right down here right around the 6671 which I'm going to make that a strong buy and I'm going to turn that you know it's kind of neat if you all have toss you can watch me use some of these tools and get familiar with them and then I'm going to change this into a red line this is going to be my low support right here the grub I'm really liking this trade right now I think we're in a good spot to really make some money on this trade so be sure to watch your options on it too we got a low support right here at 66.74 any lower than that's going to be a real real strong buy with the bottom at 63.80 and then we got that pivot point area in this channel at 68.58 to 69.21 with a resistance that we need to break. And that's going to be these resistance lines up here. And that resistance is going to be between 72.27 and 72.91 in that little channel right there. And if we can bounce it past that 72.91, we've got two long-term resistances to hit, 74.74 and 76.98. But this is a nice little 20-day channel to be working off of. If it does pull back, it might be a good time to buy an option and run it up to these resistance lines right up in here. Maybe go along with it up in here. So this is Grub, and I do love my food. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be the Spy. And uh, we had a beautiful call in the room on the Spy. And I just want to go ahead and hand this over to Miss Vegas and she'll talk about it and that's going to be the spot. yeah so you know what we had the uh, farm C meeting this afternoon and uh, you know we want to hear about the federal and find out and again farm C stands for federal open market committee and uh, they did have the meeting and they basically said that uh, they're going to hold the rates and uh, that was basically it and uh, that's all we needed to hear. And, and we thought the market was going great and uh, or that it would stay stable. But I got to say, what a crazy reaction, because um, if you look at the spy. OK, so I want to mention this guy in our room named Rich, and he's really good at giving us spy calls whenever there's a farm C meeting. And so he gave us a spy. We did a straddle. So what we do a straddle is when you buy one call where you think it's going to be bullish and then one put where you think it's going to become bearish. So we buy one of each, or if you want to buy more than one, you could buy five of each, 10 of each, 20 of each, whatever you're good with. But usually, you know, for smaller accounts, they like to just buy one of each. So they were both around the same price. And uh, Jim, I think you could show, I did post it that yep. on social media. Yep. And so Rich did give two setups. He gave a call and a put. So the, it was the 294 strike was for the puts and those were 45 cents. So it was a $45 investment for one put. And then the 294.50 strike, that was a 40 cents and that was a $40 investment. So in all, if you got one of each, your total investment was $85. Okay. So for a small account, that's actually not bad, $85. Because we know that either way you're going to make money because one of these has to go up or one of these is going to go down. So you're going to obviously make your money. So if you notice on the SPY chart uh, after the FOMC meeting, uh, we started to notice, I would say probably around 3.18, so 3.12 p.m. Uh, I mean, uh, after the meeting, I mean, things looked okay. Uh, things looked pretty stable for about 25 minutes. Then we did see a pullback around 233. Then we kind of saw it stabilize around 245. And then we kind of had a bit of a double top. And then you know what? I start pulling back around 315, 318 p.m. We saw the market pulling right back. 
and I don't know what was, you know, it's had to be some, you know, comments that were being made. And next thing you know, you know, we said to people that bought these option, um, these option, either the calls and the puts, we did say, don't sell anything until we wait until to see the market reaction after the FOMC meeting. So nobody was selling anything because we weren't sure what is the, how is the market going to behave? And you know what? This went for a bearish turn. So what ended up happening is that those option calls that were 45 cents for the puts, those became, those went as high, believe it or not, Jim, um, at the time I took the screenshot, it was uh, $2 and four cents each contract. So the $45 became $200. So even if you spent $85, you still made over $100 of profit. So you made back your 85 plus you made another 100 bucks plus uh, profit. But these went as high as um, $253 a contract. Um, so that is just impressive for um, a straddle play on options for the farm seat. But I got to say, very disappointed to see that the, that, the, that the spy pulled back like this. I mean, everything was pulling back. All the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, um, BABA. I mean, I'm not even going to talk about Google because we know that story. But wow, everything just pulled back like the rug was just pulled, you know, under your feet. Uh, so, Jim, let's hear about the SPY and the chart and your thoughts. Well, a lot of people remember if they've been trading here last year in December, when a lot, I know a lot of people have made some real good money on putting, calling the puts on this stock. When it was up here around 267, it ran all the way down to 233 in a matter of less than two weeks. That was just, I've never, I haven't seen that probably since the recession back in 2007, 2008. And then ever since then, my crystal ball came out and I alerted everybody that was around me. I said, get ready and start buying some stocks that you really like and if you'd have got in this at 233 and and just took it five months you'd run up to that double top that we had at the year high here at 293.55 so that was an incredible run and you could have been a millionaire definitely with them call with them calls alone if you'd have marked it up to maybe july or something so let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day now i called this out last week for a double bottom and I'm going to pull up the 20 day right around this low support area. And then let me put up the five. I think the five will probably be more legit. Yeah, right down here, I alerted the room at, when it hit down here at the bottom right here in this pigsty here at 291.11, 291.10 to get in this call. And it ran all the way up that day to resistance level of 292.73. And I had a target of 292.07. So we're going to pull this back up to the... To, to, and you can see where this thing's pulled back right to that spot where I called this out at five days ago. So I'm thinking that this, stock, this market's running on algorithms right now. And that we're going to have a retracement bounce on this trade back up to about 292.07 come tomorrow. We're going to hit that bottom that we hit right here you see what I'm talking about that little spot right there that's going to be a good little spot to have a first target at and then we can run it back up above that 292 207 back up to the 292 73 right in here probably have a pause like it did before and I think it's going to act just like the same we're going to retrace market's going to cool off after this hard sell off because that that's just a little bit too much too harsh when we had a high up here at 295.45 pre-market and it ran all the way back down here to 291.22 so let me see if I'm right tomorrow I want to see this retrace back up to 292.07 and then probably have what you would call a stepladder run or a zigzag run where it'll get higher where we'll see higher highs and higher lows and that's going to be the spy and then we're going to throw out a bonus play right now and Miss Vegas, would you like to bring that up? Yeah, so you know what, you guys, if you've listened to the commentary on YouTube, I've talked about this one before, so you guys know this company quite well. 
And I'll remind you, this is now we're back. We're going to talk about APPS again, apps. And you guys know that they make, uh, dig this is Digital Turbine. And uh, they're an application software technology company. Love the website. And uh, it's, a, it's a really cute little website. And uh, they do all these little mobile apps, right? Yep. So they do app advertising. They do mobile delivery platform. Uh, they, you know, if you have a business, they, they try to engage your customers. They try to get your app discovered. So if you have an app you've developed for your business, uh, they will help get your app discovered. So they'll promote it. They'll do all kinds of things to help engage people. And, um, you know, it's a pretty cool website. Uh, very, you know, very user friendly. Um, but nevertheless, uh, let's go talk about this chart. So apps is back on the watch. And one for you guys to watch, especially for the day traders as well. Um, this is looking really solid here, really like in the new uptrend. Kind of looking like a cup has formed. Uh, and uh, looking for the stock to have a continuation. Now, apps today, uh, let me just take a look at where it traded here. So, yeah, I mean, it did go, I think, as high as, because we did have this earlier today. And 404. 404 was the high and the low was 376 and people are still holding the stock. It hasn't really pulled. It pulled back a little, but not that much. Um, but you know what? There is resistance at 409 and 420. Uh, what a number. But you know what? I'm going to let Jim talk about this because I really like the direction of where this is going. And this to me looks like some new highs are coming on uh, apps. And you know what? I really think there's going to be, an, this is a really nice swing trade, nice chart. So if you guys work a full-time job and you don't really, you kind of want something stress-free, I think apps is one. And you know what? This is also another pocket pivot has been formed. Uh, and whenever you see a pocket pivot, we've talked about pocket pivots. It's kind of like a bit of a new footprint is being made. And whenever you see a pocket pivot on a chart, it's kind of letting you know that this chart, um, pay more attention in a way because it's kind of going to be on a new trend. And I like the way the MACD's uh, crossed over and a 52-week closing high. Just everything's just green, 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 green. Go, 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 go. So let's see what happens here with Jim's support and resistance lines. And uh, again, if you work, and you're, you know, this should be something you look at tomorrow. If it's not in your portfolio, uh, you may want to check this out and look to swing trade this stock once we hear Jim's resistance and supports. Okay, well. Definitely, we're going to talk about this one right here. I'm drawing it up. I see a pennant flag breakout we had today. And then when that had the double top up here, right around 404, she decided to have three black crows. I'm going to discuss what they are. That's what you call these little red candles right here. And then right after that red candle, we created a decent another bounce candle. It was small, but the next candle above it, you see how the base of that candle was just right at the top of this one here. On that wick and she went ahead and for about 20 minutes kind of held around there and then we had a spinning top right here and she ran on up and hit that breakout up here right around 497 and closed right there at 497 so that's what I call is three black crows right here so we're gonna pull this back to a decent level here we got a low support at 389 that's where them bleep three black crows kind of settled out and consolidated and we've got another support level right here at 395. And we've got another resistance breakout right here, right around $4. And then we got that double top up here. I'm not going to count the wicks at 404, but I'm going to go ahead and ride them out at the base at 403. And that's what we got to break. So I'm going to pull up the year's chart, see if we need to break any new highs. We did have a, a, a year high right here at the 404. I'm going to pull up a three year just to have one little fast look at it. That's a three-year high. We've talked about this before. We're going to go back to the daily one minute. That's what I look at when I'm day trading. We have a low support right here, probably around the second support right here at 389, with a low, low support right here at 380. And then if it dips on down a little bit more, it's going to be a strong buy. I hate to see it get down here to 362 bottom we had uh, yesterday. But right now, it looks to me like it's a pennant flag breakout. 
with higher highs and then you got your lower highs coming in here once we meet at the middle we're going to see what happens pre-market if it pulls back to any of these supports here at 389 that's going to be probably a good strong buy if it doesn't hold we'll take it down to this next support level at 380 anything below that will be a strong buy this is apps and that will finish our aftermarket report Feel free any time to stop these videos and write down these supports and resistance lines that I do call out. And the red ones mean something. And if you would like, would you please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. Also on our website, we do have... Where did our website go? There it is. We do have a link to our Twitter account. Please subscribe to it. And you can follow Vegas and I on Stock Twits. We also do have a link right there, Pintergeist. We also have a link, Facebook. We do have our YouTube channel on here. And if you feel like writing to us, we also have that available. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Yeah, so just a couple closing comments. You know, sometimes, you know, you see things on social media. And, uh, you know, people think sometimes because they have, um, you know, so many followers that, um, you know, that that's just a, always a good sign of, of the trades. But, you know, I got to tell you, you know, I just, we're, you know, when you're busy managing a room and coaching people in real time, I don't have time to post on social media all day. Um, a lot of, you know, uh, other rooms and, you know, it doesn't matter if they're paid rooms. I got to say the ones that are paid, um, a lot of them don't always post nonstop. They're busy with their members of the room. And that's because. The commitment is to the people in the room. And, you know, the thing is, we do have a free trial. So, I mean, you know, people don't have to join us. You can come check it out and you can decide if it's for, if it's for you. You know, at the end of the day, I know people want to see me post a little more. Uh, the thing is, it's very time consuming to post charts and to post commentary. At the same time, you know, we're answering a lot of questions in real time in the room and watching charts and scanners and trying to put stuff on Twitter and, you know, coaching people live on voice. And Jim and I talk many hours on voice. And, you know, unlike some other channels out there, uh, people just type messages all day. And I mean, honestly, that would bore me. Uh, not knocking those rooms at all. I'm just saying that I've been in those rooms where they don't even really talk to you, just reading messages all day. I would be bored. So ever since I saw a voice feature out there, um, to me, that's just the way it needs to be because people need to hear what's going on and they need to feel connected. I mean, that's the whole reason chat rooms actually came about and have become so popular because trading is lonely and people like to be in chat rooms, whether it's a paid one or not is irrelevant. Um, it's that they like to be speaking with people and engaged with people and not just typing all day. They want to hear you. They want to feel you. They want to talk to you. They want to ask questions. And that's what we do. So you're welcome to come by. So I'm sorry that we can't post nonstop. Um, I'll try my best to try to post more. Uh, but certainly it's because we're just so swamped with the room in general. So again, you know, please don't be upset. <laughs> we'll try our best to, to post more often. And even Jim, like Jim has like 10 screens. And, uh, you know, him and I are engaged with each other throughout the day. And he doesn't always have time to to post either. And, and Jim, you can vouch for that too. You, you don't really post much either during the day because you're just so busy, you know? Yep. yep. I'm watching, I'm looking for alerts and to help the room out. And... Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, guys, we'll try our best to do a little more of that. Uh, so thank you for some of the uh, feedback. I got some people that emailed and said, could you guys post more often on social media? So we'll definitely try. Um, that doesn't mean because we don't post, uh, we don't care. It's just that I have to commit and focus with the members in the room um, that are here. So thank you everyone for coming by tonight. We appreciate you watching and subscribing. Hope we have some swing trade ideas for tomorrow. Trade green and uh, we'll do this again. Have a great evening. There's a little picture of my workstation right there. Miss Vegas was talking about all the monitors that I look at every day. And this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim first month first day in the month of may and we're not going away i love stocks <laughs>